Kobe, of course. I think everybody's gonna say uh, Kobe. Um, I remember uh, we played we played the Lakers towards the end of my first year, and he wasn't playing that night because it was like the last couple games in the season. They they rest they were resting him for him to uh, get ready for the playoffs. So when you're a rookie, the game is at seven, and if you want to get shots up, you got to get on the three thirty bus. So you get on the three thirty bus and we work out from three thirty to four fifteen. You go lift, you eat, and then you chill until game time. And then like all other veterans come four thirty, five thirty, right to the game. So I'm normally out there. I was I was out there every every time. We started every game at three at um, three thirty, and I remember we were making our way out there. It was all of the rookies, and you could hear like the ball bouncing like as we went out there. And Kobe was out there. It was Kobe and Phil Handy, and uh, he was just, and he was getting after it. Like that's the best way I could describe. It. Like I can't really. So like you know how there's a uh, the hashes on the foul line. So he was doing like post moves up into the midpoint, all game speed, and then when he got to the elbow, he did all face ups. So that would be like one set. So let's say he did twenty makes at each hash. And then he ran a 17. And shot a free throw. And did the same thing on the other side. And Phil Handy was guarding him. And like, you know, sometimes like when, guard, when coaches guard you, it's like dummy defense. But it, it looked like game speed. He was really uh, like hitting Phil to get open, uh, like calling for the ball. Everything that he did in the game, he did in that workout. And when he played, he never, uh, like, you know how you guys were going to like clap? He made like a whip, like because of the Mamba mentality, he made like a whistle, like, and that meant like, pass me the ball. So like the entire workout he did it, he had like some like headphones on and like after every set, he ran a 17, didn't shoot free throws, didn't get water. Like the entire workout was like that. Like, and then the next set, spot shooting, going around. And we were, we were on the court for 45 minutes and he was like, he was out there up until like some of his guys stopped making it around the court. Went, took a shower, put a suit on, watched the game. After the game, uh, I think Matt Barnes was having like a party and there was like word that he was coming. So he came to the party and then I want to say like 2 a.m. He started leaving and there was like a younger dude, Andrew Godlock, that was on the team. And I'm like, I'm like, damn, where he, where he going? I think we're going to the next spot. And they're like, but now nah, he got to go back to the gym at four. And I'm like, that's way different because it's in season. In the off season, you can kind of get away with that. You don't have that many games, you know, but to see somebody really work like that and all the stories you hear and see it in real time, uh, you know, it's, it's just different. Like, you know, I feel like, I feel like now I see a lot of people say he different, this person's different. I'm like, I saw Kobe, like, that's really different. That's a different, different type of animal, like different type of preparation. You can see in his face that uh, he depend a lot on his uh, his work ethic to get him prepared for games because there's no moving him. I remember he shot a fade fade away over me. It felt like it felt like I was watching. Like I know he didn't see me, bro. Like, and I jumped as hard as I can. Just a different person. Uh, overseas basketball is tough. Um, uh, you're an American player. Uh, the expectations for you to be better than your teammates is extremely high, and you gotta win. You gotta play well, and you win, or you will get shipped home. It's the most eye-opening thing that I've experienced because most of us are coming from the other side of the world. So I've seen dudes not perform and get cut. I've seen a dude that had wife, two kids, dog, <laughs> whole family with him, and get cut, sent home. So if you don't bring it in possessions, you take off, you lose a couple games, you will get shipped out of there quick. When you in high school, enjoy making the mistakes, learn from the mistakes, enjoy it. Them, I've seen mistakes cost somebody. I've seen a point guard turn the ball over a lot of times, and two days later, it was a brand new point guard at the gym. It's that fast. There's so many people waiting for opportunity to play basketball that, I mean, you can be sent home. Fortunately for my career, I was never sent home. But the scariest feeling is 
somebody you just got cool with, gone. <laughs> One of my closest teammates that I had, he was living in Russia. Uh, we played together for half a season. He was there with his entire family. Even the in-laws was there and they cut him. It was zero remorse. A new coach came in, didn't like his style of play, didn't fit what he was looking for, gone. A big name that played at the uni University of Kentucky didn't fit what this coach thought, didn't pass enough, didn't play hard enough. In front of, and Russia is super cutthroat. It's, we, they, you will get cut in front of your peers. Like, get out. We'll, we'll talk to your agent later. I saw that. There's no talking, there's no patting you on the back like, oh, everything is gonna be okay. Next is a new guard coming.